Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over changes that affect prop pally gearing in the Wrath Classic pre-patch and what gear I'm going to use based on those changes. At the end I'll also talk about talents and glyphs, but there are a ton of changes to talk about so let's just get right into it. First off, I get a lot of questions about what exactly pre-patch is, so let's go over that. Pre-patch is short for pre-expansion patch. This is a patch that introduces all of the new systems and mechanics for an upcoming expansion without the level cap being raised or new areas being released. For this pre-patch, we'll effectively be playing Wrath of the Lich King at level 70 without being able to go to Northrend. The pre-patch brings a ton of changes to the game, particularly for prop pallies. I'll have videos coming out in the future going over more of these changes in detail, but for this video I'll only be going over changes that will affect how you gear in the pre-patch. Let's now look at changes that affect our survivability. The first change actually affects us both defensively and offensively. Almost all buffs are raid-wide now, so you'll have far more buffs than you did before. The power spike you get when you're in a raid group bringing all available buffs and debuffs will be even larger than before. One of the biggest changes is that crushing blows are only dealt by mobs 4 levels higher than your character now, so boss mobs will no longer crush since they are always considered 3 levels higher than character level. This means we no longer need to gear for uncrush. Dodge, parry, and miss now also have diminishing returns, so you will get less actual avoidance percent per rating the more rating you have of these stats. However, this will be offset by Sunwell Radiance being removed and having some raid-wide buffs you might not have had before, such as Agi buff from Shamans or DKs. Ultimately, this means you'll actually have more avoidance than before for the first two-thirds of Sunwell. You'll also have raid-wide Commanding Shout, which you may not have had before. Note that base avoidance and avoidance from talents are exempt from diminishing returns and will always give full value. The pre-patch will also give us a couple new defensive tools. Divine Protection now reduces damage taken by 50% for 12 seconds with a 2 minute cooldown when talented. Ardent Defender has also been reworked to reduce damage of any attack that takes you below 35% HP by 20%, as well as having a cheat death effect where you are healed for up to 40% of your HP based on your defense if you take a killing blow. This means that when an attack hits you that normally would kill you, you don't actually die. You get healed instead of dying. As a tank, this is obviously insanely strong. We will no longer get plus defense from talents as anticipation now gives dodge instead of defense. So you may need more defense or reasel to reach crit cap depending on your gear. Shield block value also gets buffed massively. Any item with shield block value is buffed to have significantly more of this stat in pre-patch, and you'll now get one shield block value for every two strength. Sunwell geared prop values can expect to have anywhere from 1000 to 1400 passive block value, depending on your gear choices. Your healers will also be receiving buffs, allowing them to keep you alive easier. Lastly, all TBC raid bosses and trash have their HP and damage reduced. So bosses will be dying extremely quickly and dealing little damage. Considering all of these changes, our survivability will be through the roof in pre-patch, so I recommend gearing more offensively. Now let's look at changes that affect prop valleys offensively. The biggest changes are we now use high DPS weapons instead of spell power weapons, and strength is our primary threat stat instead of spell power. A new talent, Touched by the Light, converts 60% of our strength to spell power, and we have another talent, Divine Strength, that increases our strength by 15%. We also want to go for Physical Hit Cap, which is now 8% against bosses, and Expertise Soft Cap, which is 26 Expertise, or 6.5% reduced chance to be dodged and parried. At 26 Expertise, dodges are completely pushed off our attack table against bosses, so further Expertise will only lower parry chance. We can continue to benefit from Expertise up to the hard cap of 14% reduced parry chance, or 56 Expertise. It is potentially worthwhile to go for this. There is now only one hit rating set, and it gives both physical and spell hit, but you will get a little bit more spell hit percent per rating compared to physical hit. Crit is now a pretty good threat and damage stat as many of our damage sources can now crit, and some of them for 200% crit damage. 
crit like hit is now also just a single stat that affects both physical attacks and spells. Hammer of Righteousness is our new 51 point talent. This hits 3 targets by default and 4 when glyphed. It's affected by physical hit and it can be dodged and parried. Seals now last 30 minutes and aren't consumed when you use Judgment. Your seals no longer sometimes provide a unique debuff to Judgment. Instead, the damage of Judgment varies depending on seal and Judgment is split into three different Judgment abilities. Wisdom, Light, and Justice. This allows you to put up the Judgment Light or Wisdom debuff regardless of what seal you have active. Judgment is now also on the global cooldown. Your primary seal will be Seal of Vengeance. Note that Seal of the Crusader and its Judgment effect no longer exist. Sanctity Aura also no longer exists. The scaling of our abilities has changed quite a bit. Holy Shield, Consecration, Judgment, Seal of Vengeance, Dot Damage, Exorcism, Hammer of Wrath, and Avenger Shield scale equally with Attack Power and Spell Power. Hammer of Righteousness scales with Weapon DPS, which is affected by Attack Power, and Seal of Vengeance Instant Damage and Seal of Command scale with Weapon Damage, which is, once again, affected by Attack Power. Strength is the preferred threat stat as it gives Attack Power, Spell Power, and Block Value, so it affects all of our abilities. We also get Multipliers for Strength, further increasing the value. Attack Power is the next best as it partially affects every ability in Prepatch, and Spell Power is last as it doesn't affect Hammer of the Righteous, Seal of Vengeance instant damage or auto attack damage, and only partially affects the abilities that do scale with it. Spell Power on its own should be avoided. The most important thing to consider when choosing a weapon is the DPS. After that, you can look at stats and speed. Weapon speed is slightly relevant in prepatch, but becomes a lot more interesting later on when we have Seal of Command and Seal of Righteousness, which procs Seal of Command Cleave. Seal of Vengeance has a 100% proc chance, so faster weapons will always stack the dot more quickly than slow weapons. If you want to min-max and have a slow and fast weapon of equal DPS, you can use the fast weapon until you have 5 stacks of SOV, and then swap to a slow weapon to do increased SOV instant damage. The SOV instant damage from auto attacks will average out to be the same regardless of speed, but since Hammer of the Righteous is an instant attack, you will gain DPS proccing the higher damage SOV instance with the slow weapon versus the fast weapon. Seal of Vengeance instant damage is recorded in the combat log as Seal of Vengeance, while the dot is Holy Vengeance. You can see here the difference in SOV instant damage with a slow and fast weapon of the same DPS. Keep in mind, weapon swapping resets your swing timer, so you would want to weapon swap at the beginning of your swing timer to not lose auto attack time. You aren't going to do this perfectly, so you will still lose some fraction of auto attack time doing this. Weapon swapping in pre-patch is a min-max play, and you absolutely do not need to do this. You will barely notice a difference between weapon swapping versus using one weapon for everything. For bosses, you will likely have both a 20% haste buff and a bloodlust on the pull. So even a slow weapon will stack SOV to 5 extremely quickly. For trash, a fast weapon will be better most of the time, as you can tap target stack your SOV much more quickly to get more value out of it before the pack dies. I do recommend having a Season 4 PvP weapon or Muramasa ready for leveling if you plan to dungeon spam because it is pretty beneficial for Seal of Command when you reach level 71, and mobs will die too quickly to get great value out of Seal of Vengeance. You can see here the damage difference of Seal of Command with a slow and fast weapon of the same DPS. Alright, so now let's look at a pre-patch set. As long as your boss set has 5.6% reduced crit chance, 8% physical hit, or 7% with a drain eye, and 26 expertise, you'll be in good shape. You don't need to have this exact set, but now that you're aware of the changes, you can build a set that makes sense for you with the gear you have. All gear that is made specifically for prop alleys is reworked in pre-patch to have strength instead of spell power, so most of the gear you already have will be great in pre-patch. Keep in mind when making a set that if gearing more defensively will allow your raid to drop a healer and bring an extra DPS, that's always going to be the play. In this set, I'm gemming and enchanting very offensively, but it's up to you how you'd like to gem and enchant. 
Stam gems are great. I just think it's going to be so easy to reach an unkillable level of survivability and pre-patch that I'd rather do more threat and damage instead of having redundant survivability stats. First, we've got our head slot. I'm going with the Sunwell Engineering goggles here. Hit rating is fantastic, and the defensive stats that other helms offer are pretty redundant. If you're not an NG, other great helm options are Uther's from KJ, Baseplate from Illidan, or the Tier 6 helm. For the enchant, I like the attack power and hit enchant, but the stamina Rezil enchant is another solid option. I've also gone with the agi and crit damage meta, but you can definitely go with eternal or powerful earth storm if you want. Now let's look at necks. My top choice is Pendant of Titans from Reliquary. It's a great neck because it gives both hit and defense, which will help us keep crit immunity despite the defense loss from anticipation. Some other great neck options are Collar of the Pitlord from Brutalis, Brooch of Deafness from Badges, and Shattered Sun Pendant of Resolve from Shattered Sun Offensive Exalted. On to shoulders. My top choice for this set is Spalders of the Thalassian Defender. I did the math on Avoidance Diminishing Returns, and this set should be over 100% Avoidance against bosses already, with Holy Shield and Raid buffs, so the block rating on Baldrins of Perseverance is wasted. If I messed up the math and it turns out this set is actually below 100% Avoidance against bosses, I'd definitely swap in Baldrins of Perseverance, or if you don't quite have this exact set and find yourself short as well. Pauldrons of Perseverance are also my top choice for leveling shoulders, so definitely pick them up either way. Other than those two, tier 6 shoulders are another good option. I'm going for the AP and crit enchant, but the stam armor or defense dodge enchants are good too. Now for cloak. I'm going for Crimson Paragon, Pepe's Shroud of Pacification from Hajal Trash, and Slick's Cloak of Placation from Badges are also solid options. For Enchant, I'm going 12 Agi, but Defense is also good if you're under Crit Cap. For Chest, I like Heroic Judicator's Chest Guard. This chest brings a ton of strength, has 3 sockets for versatility, and highest stamina to armor. Tier 6 Chest, Shatrath Protector, its Breastplate from Badges, and Glory of the Defender from Asgalar are also great options. For Enchant, I like 6 stats. This was already a solid enchant before pre-patch, and now we benefit even more from the strength and agility parts of this enchant. For Bracer, I'm going with Tier 6 Bracer. This is one of the 4 pieces I'm going to use to maintain my 4 piece bonus. This bonus is not an absolute must have, as Consecration will now be a significantly lower portion of our damage and threat, but if you're able to fit it in, it's good to have. The Seeker's Risk Guards from Shade of Akama are another good option. For the Enchant, I like 12 Strength, but for all stats, Stam, Defense, and Block Rating Enchants are also good. Now for Weapons. A Season 4 PvP weapon is my top choice, followed by Muramasa and then Dragon Skill and Crested Longblade. I already went over Weapon Speed earlier, but all of these weapons will be great. Season 4 will just be slightly better. One thing I like about the Season 4 weapon is that it has Rezil, so it will help you maintain your crit immunity both at level 70 and while leveling as you lose defense. The Season 4 weapons should be obtainable without a rating requirement and with a discounted price following the end of the PvP season. You can currently get about a thousand arena points a week even with a low rated team, so I definitely recommend doing that. I'm currently getting 1,000 points a week on my 1,300 rated 3v3 team, where I play 3 games a week as prot and other people finish the other 7 games. So this is a very small time and effort commitment. Some other good weapon options if you don't have any of the 3 I mentioned are Season 3 weapons, the Brutalizer, Rising Tide, Siphon of the Nathruzim, the Unbreakable Will, or Cleaver of the Unforgiving. For Enchant, I like Mongoose, but Potency, which gives 20 Strength, is also good. Now for Shield. Swordbreaker's Bulwark is the top choice with the best overall stats, followed by a Bulwark of Azanoth and Khazragal's Hardened Heart. For Enchant, I'm going with 18 Stam. For Gloves, I'm going with Tier 6. They're going to be part of the 4-piece, and they're statted well. Other options are Borderland Fortress Grips, Gauntlets of Enforcement, Tier 5 Gloves, and Royal Gauntlets of Silvermoon. For Enchant, I'm going 15 hit. Threat shouldn't be an issue, so 2% threat shouldn't be necessary, but if you find that it is, you can just throw some hit gems in your gear and switch to the 2% threat enchant. 
You could also go for 15 strength for damage if you don't need the hit, or 15 agi for a mix of damage and survivability. For belt, I'm going with tier 6 for the 4 piece, and the stats on this belt are great. Girdle and Mighty Resolve from Girtok Blood Boil is another fantastic option. Other options are Girdle of the Fearless from Badges, Girdle of Stability from Gertog, or Girdle of the Protector from Badges. For legs, I'm going with Fell Strength Leg Plates. We get tons of defense and expertise, as well as three sockets and good stam and strength from these. Other good options are Adjudicator's Legards from Kilikos, Praetorian's Legards from Shade of Akama, Tier 6 Legs, Inscribed Leg Plates of the Aldor from Badges, Tier 5 legs or unwavering legards from badges. For leg enchant, I'm going with nether cleft leg armor. This is a good place to pick up some stam since there's no strength, hit, or expertise option, and edgy is also solid. For boots, I'm going with tier 6 boots as the last part of my four piece. Other solid options are Myrmidon's treads from Shade of Akama, Blue's Greaves of the Righteous Guardian from Badges, Tad Stomper's Greaves from Nagentis, or Sabaton's of the Righteous Defender from Badges also. For Enchant, I'm going with Boar's Speed since we won't be able to get Pursuit of Justice in pre-patch. Now on to Rings. Ring of Hardened Resolve from Muru is my number one choice. We pick up Expertise on top of Defense for our Crit Immunity, and a ton of defensive stats to help make up for gearing more aggressively in other slots. For my second ring, I like Band of the Abyssal Lord from Supremus. This is going to give us a lot of Sam, a bunch of defense for our crit immunity, and some hit we need. Other ring options are Band of the Eternal Defender or Champion from Hyjal Exalted, 7th Ring of the Tears Fallon from Tempest Keep Trash, Ring of the Stalwart Protector from Badges, or Signet of the Last Defender from ZA. Now for Trinkets. Shard of Contempt from Heroic Magister's Terrace and Steely Naru's Sliver from Muru are my top two. These are going to give us a ton of expertise, and Steely Naru will further increase our survivability, making it even more unlikely we ever die despite aggressive gearing choices. This set gets close to pushing parries completely off the attack table, and these trinkets are a big reason why. We don't have any strength trinket options, so I think these are the best value we can get. Darkmoon Card Crusade from the Blessings deck can be good since many of our damage sources scale with both AP and SP, but the ramp up time is going to be pretty problematic since bosses will be dying extremely quickly in pre-patch. However, this trinket is amazing for dungeon leveling in Wrath, and it will be great for trash in pre-patch as well. Other options are Berserker's Call from ZA, Commendation of Kael'thas from Heroic Magister's Terrace, Darkmoon Card Vengeance from the Furies deck, Stylian's Impeding Scarab from BWL, and Shadowmoon Insignia from Gertog. Lastly, we've got Librams. The best overall option is Tome of the Lightbringer from Mother Shiraz. It's been buffed from a 5 to 10 second duration, so you can have 100% uptime on it. After the 30% block value increase from Talents, it gives 242 block value. This is a great spot for us to pick up some survivability, since there aren't many options here, and the value of Tome significantly outweighs what few options we do have. This will also be fantastic for leveling. If you don't have Tome of the Lightbringer, Librum of Repentance from Badges or Librum of Avengement from Heroic Blood Furnace are other options. The consumes we will use will change in pre-patch, so these are the ones I'm planning to use. Elixir of Major Strength. After Talent and Raid buff multipliers, Elixir of Major Strength will give 97.4 attack power, 26.6 spell power, and 28.8 block value. Gift of Arthas increases the damage of every physical DPS in your raid. Iron Shield Pot. This is great since it allows us to gear more offensively and get far more damage and threat than gearing tankier and using an offensive pot would instead. One new thing in Wrath is that potions can only be used once per combat. So what you'll want to do is use a pot right before the pull, before actually being put in combat, and then use another pot two minutes into the fight. This effectively allows you to pot twice per fight despite the new limitation. Pre-patch fights should be so short that this won't actually be necessary for that many fights in pre-patch. Brilliant Wizard Oil. Now that crit is actually pretty good for us, the 14 crit rating should outperform the 6 extra spell power of Superior Wizard Oil. 
The spell power will also affect all of our damage sources except Hammer of the Righteous, Auto Attacks, and SOV Instant Damage, while Adamantite Sharpening Stone will only affect those three things. And finally, Roasted Cleft Tooth. I'm just leaning more into Thread and Damage here, but Stam and Hit are also good options. Next, let's look at a pre-patched talent build. I may adjust this if a reliable sim becomes available, but this is what I'm planning on right now. First, I'm taking Divine Strength. Strength is a great stat for us, and this talent gives us 15% more, which is going to increase our attack power, spell power, and block value. The only other option in this tier is Divinity, and 5% extra healing taken for 5 points is really weak. Next, I'm taking Anticipation. This is going to give us 5% extra dodge, and it isn't affected by diminishing returns. Stoicism and Guardian's favor in this tier could situationally be useful, but in general, Anticipation is the go-to. Next, we've got Toughness. This increases our armor from items by 10% and reduces the duration of slow effects on us by 30%. Armor is an extremely good stat for us, and this is a go-to pickup. Improved Righteous Fury is also on this tier and reduces all damage taken by 6%, another great talent. Here we can also pick up Divine Sacrifice, which is a spell that redirects damage taken by party members to you, and it caps at 40% of your HP times the number of people in your party. The effect will also break if you go below 20% HP. Divine Guardian on the next tier will also cause Divine Sacrifice to reduce damage taken by 20%. This is a fantastic raid cooldown, but you do have to be a little careful when you use it as a tank, since it can greatly increase your damage taken. I'm most likely going to skip this in pre-patch just because of how easy the raids will be, but later this will be a very important talent to have. Next, I'm getting Improved Devotion Aura, which increases the armor bonus of Devotion Aura by 50%, and the amount of healing received by anyone affected by any of your auras by 6%. Sanctity Aura is no longer in the game, so you'll generally be using Devotion Aura, and having extra armor and healing received for yourself is great. Our auras now also affect the entire raid, so you're actually increasing the armor and healing received of everyone that's within range of you in your raid. Improved Hammer of Justice is also in this tier, but only situationally useful. Next, I'm picking up Blessing of Sanctuary. This is something you'll always get. It has been reworked to increase stamina and strength by 10%. Note, this doesn't stack with kings. You'll still benefit from the agility, int, and spirit from kings, but the stamina and strength will not stack. Every time you dodge, parry, or block, you'll gain 2% of your mana back, and it also decreases all damage taken by 3%. This helps a ton for easing our mana issues. Reckoning is also in this tier, and I'm most likely getting 3 points in this for pre-patch, since I don't think Divine Sacrifice will be very useful with how easy the raids will be. This is something you'll usually only pick up when you're doing easy things, and you can get away with taking points out of something else. Next, one-handed weapon specialization, which increases all damage you deal when you have a one-handed weapon equipped, which is always, by 10%. This is a big damage increase for very few points. It used to cost 5 talent points and only give 5% damage. You'll always get this. On the same tier, I'm getting Sacred Duty, which increases stand by 4% and reduces the cooldown of our new shield wall, Divine Protection, by 60 seconds. This is another talent you'll always want. Next tier, we have Ardent Defender. We already talked about this earlier. This is an auto-include. Definitely grab this. Holy Shield is also on this tier, another auto-include. One thing to note about Holy Shield is it's now an 8 second cooldown, but lasts 10 seconds. So you often don't need to cast it right when it's off cooldown to have 100% uptime. Spiritual Attunement used to be baseline for us, but it's now a talent. Generally, you're only going to put one point in this, but if you find yourself having man issues, you can add a second point. Next here, we have Readout. This is the same as before, except now it has the old shield specialization talent baked into it. You'll always want this. We also have Combat Expertise on this tier, which increases Expertise by 6 and Stamina Crit by 6%. This is yet again another talent you'll always want. Next tier, we have Guarded by the Light. It reduces spell damage taken by 6% and causes your melee attacks to refresh Divine Plea. We don't actually get Divine Plea until level 71, 
but at that point, this talent is a must have. The reduced spell damage is really good, but you'll likely have no issues surviving in pre patch, so you could put these points somewhere else if you wanted to. However, I'm still likely picking this up. On this same tier, we have Avenger Shield. This is another easy pickup. Avenger Shield is now instant cast, so it's even better than before. Touch by the Light is going to convert 60% of your strength to spell power. Most of our damage sources still have partial spell power scaling, so this is an easy pickup. Next, we've got Shield of the Templar, which reduces all damage taken by 3% and makes Avenger's Shield silence for 3 seconds. Taking less damage as a tank is obviously great. You'll usually want to pick this up, but situationally it can be dropped if damage taken isn't an issue and there's value in something else. The Silence is fantastic for pulling caster mobs or gang interrupts. Judgments of the Just on this tier usually isn't going to be picked up because other people will likely bring this debuff. This debuff is brought by Feral tanks, Prot Warriors, and both DK tanks and DPS can potentially spec for it. So only pick this up if nobody in your raid is bringing it, or for fights where you may be tanking something that nobody with the debuff will be attacking the majority of the time. Last in the Prot tree, we have Hammer of the Righteous. This is an amazing new ability that's part of our rotation. It does damage based on your main hand DPS, which scales with attack power to three targets and four when glyphed. However, this glyph will not be available in pre-patch. This also procs your seal, making it even better. You're always gonna pick this up. Now let's look at the ret tree. In pre-patch, we're going to have 10 points at most left when we finish prot. So our options are limited. On the first tier, I'm gonna pick up deflection for 5% more parry. Once again, this is not affected by diminishing returns, so you'll get full value. Benediction on this tier usually isn't picked up because you likely won't have mana issues, and if you do, you'll just put another point in spiritual attunement instead, as it's more efficient mana per point. Next tier we have Imp Blessing of Might, which is situational. Raid buffing is much more simplified in Wrath, and almost every buff can be brought by multiple specs and affects the whole raid. Battle Shout and Blessing of Might are an example of this. Both fall under a general static attack power buff category now, and don't stack. If someone else in your raid is bringing Imp Might or Battle Shout with Commanding Presence, you can skip it. Small note, Blessing of Might is one more attack power than Battle Shout and Prepatch, and two more attack power at level 80. Part of the Crusader increases crit chance of your raid against targets affected by your judgment by 3%. It is likely going to be redundant because its debuff is brought by Assassination Rogues, Ret Pallies, and Elemental Shamans. If nobody else is bringing this, you definitely should pick it up. It can be worthwhile to have redundancy on this debuff and others because the whole raid won't necessarily all be on the same targets every fight, or if you only have one person bringing the debuff and they die, you just don't have the debuff anymore. Improved Judgments is also in this tier. The first point is always worthwhile, and once we have Shield of Righteousness, it makes Judgment fit perfectly into our 696 rotation. I'll discuss this rotation more in a future video geared towards level 80, but basically you just weave your shorter cooldown spells with your longer ones so the CDs line up and you always have something to press. The second point in Imp Judgment can also be useful. It has increased usefulness in the pre-patch since we don't yet have the full rotation and therefore have extra space to fit an earlier judgment. The 8 second cooldown and 10 second duration of Holy Shield also allows us greater chance of benefiting from the reduced judgment CD time compared to TBC since we have flexibility on when we refresh Holy Shield while still keeping it up all the time. During Bloodlust, we have a significantly reduced global cooldown, which will further increase the benefit of a second point. Bloodlust is now a raid-wide buff, so we'll always get it, whereas before we were often rotated out of groups, so a DPS could get it instead. Note that Bloodlust applies the Sated debuff, which makes you unable to receive Bloodlust again for 10 minutes, so you will only get one Bloodlust per fight, except for very rare long fights. With how short boss fights will be in pre-patch, Bloodlust should have ridiculously high uptime when fighting bosses, so you should benefit quite a bit from the reduced CD 2 points gives you. I'll be picking up 2 points here myself. Also in pre-patch we have very limited glyph options, so I'll actually be using the Judgment Glyph which increases judgment damage by 10%, which further increases the value of the second point. 
finally, so long as I don't need to bring Heart of the Crusader or Imp Blessing of Might, I'm going to put my remaining points into Seals of the Pure and the Holy Tree. It increases the damage of both Seal of Vengeance and Judgment by 3% per point. This is a pretty solid damage increase, and these damage sources will be a higher proportion of our total damage in pre-patch, since we won't have our full rotation yet. Since I'll also be using Glyph of Judgment, the value of Seals of the Pure is slightly increased. I should also mention that there is a new system called Dual Specking. This costs 1000 gold and allows you to have two different talent specs. You have one active talent spec and one inactive talent spec, and you can activate the inactive one whenever you want. So you can have multiple prot specs if you want. You could have one spec for trash, one spec for bosses, or two different boss specs, whatever you want to do. Finally, let's take a look at glyphs. Glyphing is a new system in Wrath, and glyphs are made by the new inscription profession. At level 70, you get two major glyphs and three minor glyphs, with a third major glyph slot unlocking at level 80. Major glyphs give pretty big buffs to your spells and can really help you min max for specific situations. Minor glyphs typically give quality of life bonuses, but pallies actually get one that increases character power too. Glyph of Sense Undead, which increases damage done to undead mobs by 1%. Not all glyphs will be available in pre-patch because many of them require mats from Northrend to make or a higher inscription level than will be possible before scribes reach trainers in Northrend. Now let's go over the major glyphs that are potentially useful and available in pre-patch. First, Glyph of Judgment, which increases damage of judgment by 10%. This isn't super impactful as Judgment is a much lower portion of our damage now, but I'll be using it in pre-patch just due to lack of options. Next, Glyph of Exorcism, which increases Exorcism damage by 20%. Exorcism is now usable on all mob types and will be a guaranteed crit when used on Undead and Demons, but it has a 1.5 second cast time now. We will be fighting a ton of Demons and Undead in pre-patch, and we're missing Shield of Righteousness to fill out our rotation, so this is a pretty good option. But again, this is another pick that's more just because we don't have too many good options in pre-patch. Next, Glyph of Spiritual Attunement, which increases mana return from Spiritual Attunement by 2%. This is kind of a middle ground option if you find 1 out of 2 in Spiritual Attunement isn't quite enough to keep your mana up, but want to save a talent point by skipping 2 out of 2 Spiritual Attunement. And finally, Glyph of Righteous Defense, which increases your chance to hit with Hand of Reckoning, our new single target taunt, and Righteous Defense by 8%. This Glyph is actually pretty bad in my opinion, but I wanted to mention it and go over why I think that. First off, it's mainly just for bosses since the spell hit cap for a mob one level above your character level is 4%, and two levels above is 5%. Unless you're extremely undergeared, you should be spell hit capped already for all trash mobs. If you're physical hit capped at 8% physical hit for bosses, you'll have about 10% spell hit as well, since hit rating now gives both types of hit, but slightly more spell hit percent per rating. The spell hit cap is now 17% for bosses, as the previous 1% chance for spells to resist that couldn't be removed in TBC is now removable by getting an extra 1% spell hit. Shadow Priests and Boomkins will also put up a debuff that increases spell hit by 3%, so you'll already have 13% spell hit just by getting your 8% physical hit cap and having a Shadow Priest or Boomkin in your raid. Your two taunts are also both off the global cooldown and only have 8 second cooldowns, so if one resists it doesn't really matter since you can instantly use the other one. So what we really care about is the probability of both of our taunts resisting. If you have 13% spell hit, the probability of both taunts resisting is 0.16%, or 1 in 625. Personally, I don't think it's really worth giving up a glyph slot for something that is this unlikely to happen, but the alternative glyphs also aren't must-haves for the slot you'd put this glyph in anyway, both in pre-patch and at 80. So it's up to your personal preference. I would only use it on an undergeared pally that doesn't have much spell hit, or possibly if there wasn't a Boomkin or Shadow Priest in the raid. All minor glyphs are available in pre-patch, but we don't really get choices here. 
Flip of Sense Undead, which increases damage done to undead mobs by 1% when Sense Undead is active. This one's a no-brainer, increases our damage as a minor glyph. Glyph of Lay on Hands, which decreases the cooldown of Lay on Hands by 5 minutes. Side note, Lay on Hands is now a 20-minute cooldown and now gives a 2-minute forbearance when used on yourself. So you're generally using this to keep other people alive. This is one you're just going to pick up because there's not another good option. And lastly, Glyph of the Wise, which reduces the mana cost of Seal of Wisdom by 50%. This glyph doesn't help us a whole lot, but the only other minor glyph options increase the duration of Blessing of Wisdom, Kings, and Might by 10 minutes when cast on yourself, and you'll never really be casting those on yourself as a prop value. So we don't really have options here, we're kind of just forced into Glyph of Sense Undead, Glyph of Lay on Hands, and Glyph of the Wise. That about wraps up everything you need to know about pre-patch Prop Pally. Look out for some future videos where I'll be covering some of the other changes. If you like what I do and want to support me, easiest way is just liking, subscribing, and commenting. You can also follow me on Twitch. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.